What up, Buffalo fanatics, 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 Z bot, bot, Z here with you live, live, live. Uh, no, not again. Come on. Man, every time I go live, my internet lags out. <sighs> What's this? Z bot, you gotta start using NordVPN for your streams. It will help speed up your internet. Two-year plan is 70% off at the BFVPN.com and you get your first month free. Kingpin knows best. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Z-Bot back with you with better than ever internet connection thanks to NordVPN. The best live streams use the best internet connection. Visit the BFPN.com to take advantage of 70% off a two-year plan with your first month free. to the air raid out of Buffalo Fanatics video experience. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to a special and different episode here of the Air Raid Hour. My name is Steve Mathis. You can find me on Twitter at Judge Mathis. And as you can tell, uh, there are no faces on the screen here today, and we are not live. This is a pre-recorded episode here of the Air Raid Hour, uh, live from my phone. I'm actually recording this on my phone. So me and Dave, we're both back in Buffalo this weekend for the Buffalo Fanatics uh, lead-sponsored golf tournament with Buffalo Logo and Joe Kroom. It was a great time. Got to meet with Tilt Money, got to meet with Clay Troya, Zbot, Pierre. Uh, a lot of the BF crew was there. We got to enjoy the, uh, the the Packers game on Saturday as well. So we will be back live Thursday with our reaction to the 53-man roster. But for today, just a special little show here, uh, pre-recorded. Uh, we're going to break down the Bills-Packers 19-0 victory, and then we're going to talk about our predictions for the 53-man roster. So let's start with Bills-Packers. Buffalo 19, Packers 0. It was an awesome game. Here were some of the positives that I took away from this game. Number one, Joshua freaking Allen, man. I mean, I, I was sitting next to my dad during the game, and I turned to him, and I just said, this is like watching a video game. Like, this doesn't this doesn't look real. And I understand it was the backup Packers defense. I understand it was the preseason. But Josh Allen, just everything that you saw in practice translated onto the football field. It was just... Take what the defense gives you, dink, dunk, here, there, finding guys open, uh, just doing what you need to do to be a franchise quarterback. Like, he looked like what a franchise quarterback should look like in the preseason. <laughs> he didn't look rusty. He didn't look bad. Like, he looked what you expect a franchise quarterback to look like in the preseason. And uh, obviously, everyone is going to remember that absolute piss missile from <laughs> Josh Allen to Gabriel Davis on third and 20. I, I Again, I was sitting next to my dad. I turned to him and I said, uh, you know, third and 20, I'm like, Josh Allen's throwing this ball to the end zone. I was like, this is not going to be a dump off. This is not going to be a screen pass. This is not going to be a draw play. I'm like, that dude is tossing that football into the end zone. And sure enough, the throw that he made to Gabriel Davis, what, are there are three quarterbacks in the league who could make that throw. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, one of those guys is on their way out the door. Uh, so, you know, Patrick Mahomes had that highlight reel throw to Travis Kelsey on Friday and Josh Allen one upped him on Saturday with that toss, touchdown toss to Gabriel Davis. So that was a lot of fun seeing Josh Allen, the passing offense, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders looking comfortable out there. Josh Allen making some plays on the run, you know, creating some things when the when the when the play broke down. All fun to watch. Uh, obviously, Gabriel Davis just looking so smooth out there too. And 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 Dave and I have had this conversation on the show before. We 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 had this conversation. We were like. Yeah, it's going to be Beasley, Sanders, Diggs this year, and Gabriel Davis will get sprinkled in, and he'll probably play fairly well because he's not going to be the focal point of the offense. But the targets are going to be limited, but the production will be there. I don't know, folks. Like, you know, you have Stefan Diggs dealing with the knee tendonitis. You have Emmanuel Sanders, who also, you know, according to Roto World, has this ankle injury that he's going to be playing through the entire season. I'm not saying those guys aren't going to be effective. 
But Gabriel Davis might be wide receiver two on this football team, and it's Emmanuel Sanders is the guy who gets sprinkled in. So obviously, everything is going to change uh, in a couple in, in about a week and a half here when we take on two weeks here when we take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Everything could obviously change, but for right now, it, it looks like Gabriel Davis could be in line to be the second most targeted Buffalo Bill this year. Uh, you know, they were talking about on the post game show they were force feeding Emmanuel Sanders because they wanted to create a chemistry with Josh Allen. And you could tell that they were force-feeding the football to Emmanuel Sanders. One of the things that they weren't doing was force-feeding that ball to Gabriel Davis. That was some natural stuff right there. Like That was all natural. That was all chemistry between him and Allen. So that was fun to watch. It looked like they were working on a lot of their um, short, quick passing game. They were doing a ton of that stuff to Matt Breda, Gabriel Davis, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, that's something you probably should expect them to implement in their offense quite a bit this year. When you got guys who can work down the field like our wide receivers can, um, you know, it, the Buffalo Bills aren't going to be dinking and dunking and, and throwing those quick passes as much in the regular season as they did today or as they did during this game over the weekend. But that's something where. You know, Matt Breida or Emmanuel Sanders or Zaya McKenzie can quick th- take those quick passes. Um, you know, they can house them. They got the ability to do that. So it should be interesting to see how those uh, type of quick passing game, which is what they seem to be working on on Saturday, is implemented into the offense uh, when it's not the offense. It's just a part of the offense. So that should be interesting. Pass rush is fun to watch. I know the, uh, the Micah Hyde interception where Jordan Love got tripped up. It was Ed Oliver pushing him back. Uh, you saw guys like Daryl Johnson uh, working at defensive tackle, Boogie Basham working at defensive tackle. That's going to be a really tough decision the Buffalo Bills have to make, um, you know, this week here. And we're going to talk about that as the show progresses. But uh, the the pass rush was fun to watch again. And then the fans in the stands, <laughs> preseason game, forcing a false start. It was just so awesome. There was probably 50, 55,000 people in that stadium. Uh, it was, it looked full, right? Like, so the entire upper deck was full. The entire lower deck was full. All the suites were full. It was full. There was no giant gaps. Like there was no giant gaps in the stands um, where it looked like whole sections were empty. But even though it was filled, it was filled in, you could tell that there was a number of of empty seats in there. So it wasn't the full 72,000, but I'd say it was probably somewhere between 50 and 55,000 fans. So it was nice to see they caused that, uh, they caused that, uh, that uh, delay of game penalty on the Packers. I I might've said false start earlier. Just super fun to to experience that again. Uh, they ran out of water, which, come on, come on, <laughs> come on, Highmark. We got to be better than that. We can't run out of water when it's 90 degrees out. Josh Allen's cleats were melting. They had to water down Josh Allen's cleats at one point to the game. But can't wait until that Steelers game to see the fans back in action again in the regular season. And I can't wait for the players to experience that as well. I think a lot of the players between the, uh, between the stadium practices and and that game are starting to realize how legit this fan base here is in Buffalo and how much we love our football team. Some of the negatives, I mean, we were getting run on. Um, is it something to worry about yet? No. But uh, once the regular season comes and we're starting to scheme and we're still starting to see running backs gash us, like Kylan Hill was having some success, uh, yeah, that's going to be a bit worrisome. And, and it also makes you think about what are the Buffalo Bills going to do on cutdown day? Vernon Butler, Harrison Phillips, Justin Zimmer, you know, do we go with the big, beefier guys? Do we maybe try to sacrifice one of those bigger, beefier guys to keep seven defensive ends and use Obata and Basham and Daryl Johnson on the inside? That's a decision that the Buffalo Bills are going to have to make. So uh, that run defense was getting a little bit gashed uh, on 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 Saturday. So it'll be interesting to to see how that turns out in the cornerback depth. Cam Lewis started the game. Saran Neal started the game. Uh, Boundary and Nickel, respectively. I'm not saying they play bad, but when the regular season comes around... We need to get Levi healthy. We need to get Dane healthy. The Buffalo Bills might want to consider a veteran corner at some point, um, you know, to come in and and provide some depth. There is very little depth at this unit. We're going to talk about who makes the team at corner uh, when we get to corner. And, I mean, Cam Lewis has a shot at this point. Nick McLeod has a shot at this point. We don't know what kind of injury Dane Jackson is dealing with and all that stuff. So it's going to be super interesting. Run defense and cornerback depth were definitely two of the things that stood out as the the negatives in this football game. But it was just an awesome football game. It was a fun football game. And uh, let's move on now to our 53-man roster projections. First up is quarterbacks. Obviously, the two roster locks are Josh Allen and Mitch Trubisky. There are some people out there who probably still want to talk about, well, maybe there's a team that will trade a really high draft pick for Mitch Trubisky. 
I don't see that within the realm of possibility. So let's just skip over that. Obviously, Allen, obviously, Trubisky are locks. That leads us to Davis Webb and Jake Fromm and the decisions the Buffalo Bills have to make. I don't think Davis Webb is a 53-man roster candidate. He is more likely a guy who would be signed to the practice squad uh, after he is waived. Now, I have also heard, you know, some couple of people have made a really good point on Davis Webb across social media, and I apologize that I can't exactly name who it was who I saw this from, but this was not an original idea from me. This was something that I saw on the interwebs, and that was that, you know, Brian Dable is is, uh, one of the more respected offensive minds in the game now. Some of the things that the Buffalo Bills are doing are, are really effective. And a quarterback like Davis Webb, who now publicly has this reputation of a, as a guy who works you know, hand-in-hand hand with Brian Dable and helps scout and do all these different things for the coaching staff, a guy like Davis Webb could be valuable to another team to get intel. He could be valuable for another team to, to get a mind into that room. So we assume that Davis Webb is a safe cut who will make Uh, the practice squad, but maybe that's not 100%. But if Davis Webb clears waivers, he obviously would revert. I think the Buffalo Bills would revert him to the practice squad. He's a really important part to that room with what he brings. As for Jake Fromm, a couple of people on social media mentioned this as well. Mitch Trubisky didn't get to go. Uh, Jake, well, he played for like, what, one play. It was practice to come into the game. But Jake Fromm got to play behind the starting offensive line for a, a decent chunk of time. So, uh, a lot of people were like, well, was that an audition, possibly, to to try to trade him? Maybe. Maybe it was just the fact that they thought Mitch Trubisky got his fill, and they, they were fine with that. Um, but, yeah, in terms of Jake Fromm, if they can trade him for a 6th or a 7th round draft pick, I would say go for it. Uh, if not, and you waive him and... You you bring a chance of you have a chance of him coming back to the practice squad as well. I'm leaning towards thinking the Buffalo Bills, if they can't trade Jake Fromm, are going to keep him on the 53 man roster. But I dislike that idea so much that I refuse to think of it as a possibility. And on my graphic here, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I have Jake Fromm's name crossed out. Um, so I'm going to go with my prediction here that Josh Allen and Mitch Trubisky are the only two quarterbacks that make the roster because there are just so many other talented players in other parts of this football team that you I don't think you can justify keeping a fifth round quarterback who might turn into a quality backup. I think you got to go for the more sheer things at other parts of your roster, especially with Mitch Trubisky locked in as QB2. That brings us now to running backs. Obviously, I think the top two backs are going to be Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. I think very similar to last year, they're going to split carries 50-50. These guys have both in their limited time this preseason um, you know, shown that why exactly they were third-round picks and why they're the top two running backs in the Buffalo Bills roster. I think the one difference you do see once the regular season starts is I think you see the Buffalo Bills ride the hot hand more. So if Devin Singletary comes in early and busts off some big runs, I don't think you're going to see the Buffalo Bills quickly transition to Zach Moss. I think you might see Devin Singletary get 15, 16, 17 carries that game. They'll ride the hot hand. Same with Zach Moss. If Zach Moss comes in, busts out a few big runs, we might not see Devin Singletary the rest of the game except for to give Zach Moss a breather. So I think one thing the Buffalo Bills might try to do this year to improve the running game is ride the hot hand. Both these guys are third-round picks. Um, Neither of these guys have done anything in their careers to the point where you have to justify giving them carries. I think the Buffalo Bills based on how they've invested in the running back room, seem like neither of these guys will probably get second contracts. I don't think the Buffalo Bills want those those type of ego guys in the running back room. They want guys who understand that if they get three, four carries a game, ah, sorry, that was the game plan, and are okay with that. So uh, both Singletary and Moss seem like those type of backs. The investment in them makes them seem like those type of backs. I think they're locked in at one, two. The real question now becomes Matt Breda, Taiwan Jones, Antonio Williams, Kareth White, Christian Wade. Obviously, Christian Wade he's out. Kareth White, he's out. Kareth White might have a chance to usurp Antonio Williams as a practice squad guy. Um, You know, he is a decent, like, prospect, a guy you can develop. Very small chance that happens, though. Christian Wade will probably go to the practice squad with the exempt status, so he will be the 17th man on a 16-man practice squad. However, there is a chance with Christian Wade's age, because he is getting older, having played rugby before he played football, and with the Buffalo Bills' running back room being what it is, 
the Buffalo Bills and Christian Wade might sit down and be like, listen, Christian, we love you. We'll put you on the exempt list. We'll, we'll keep you a part of this organization. But if you ever really truly want to see a football field in the regular season, you might want to try to latch on somewhere else. So I wouldn't be surprised if Christian Wade and the Buffalo Bills amic- amicably uh, part ways this uh, in the next coming days. But it also wouldn't surprise me if he goes onto that practice guy with the exempt spot. Antonio Williams, his stinger probably puts him out of contention to have a shot to make this roster. You'll probably see him be the most likely practice squad running back. Uh, Taiwan Jones and Matt Breda both are vested veterans, meaning both will probably get cut on August 31st, or at least one of them might get cut on August 31st, most likely Breda because he carries a smaller guaranteed number. Just so we can put some guys like Harrison Phillips and Isaiah McKenzie onto injured reserve. Then, who do we bring back? Taiwan Jones, I think, is going to come back. There are some people, and even beat reporters lately, who have been taking Taiwan Jones completely off the roster. And I, I just don't get it. I mean, the way that Heath Farewell talks about Taiwan Jones, the way that Brandon Bean talks about Taiwan Jones, the fact that they haven't even risked him to injury this preseason by playing him at all, I, I, I see Taiwan Jones as the guy who's going to be one of the four the, the running backs in the running back room. And that leaves the question... Matt Breda or no Matt Breda? I think Matt Breda makes the football team. I think he adds the element that we don't have in the room in speed. But I also think he plays the TJ Yeldon role. I don't see... If you look at this team, the 53-man roster is already difficult enough to figure out, right? Now try doing 48. The 48 active on game day. And find me a, find me a roster spot for Matt Breda. Find me a roster spot for a running back who's going to touch the ball two, three times a game. It's very hard to justify an active game day roster spot for Matt Breda. If the Bills have a plan for that, cool, awesome. Matt Breda is going to make the team, but I don't, I, I, I don't think, that, I think that Matt Breda, if he makes a football team, is going to be in the T.J. Yeldon role, where he's inactive unless one of these other two guys are struggling or hurt. And I don't know if I, with all the talent on this football team, want to justify keeping that roster spot for a T.J. Yeldon. You could wave Matt Breda, and he might still be able to get onto your practice squad because there are a ton of running backs in this league, and he's not the only one who's going to be cut on August 31st. And if not, Antonio Williams has been here long enough to prove that he could probably fill in for Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. Does he bring that trade of speed? No, he does not. But again, it's hard for me to justify keeping Matt Breda on the roster. I know that trade of speed is fun and exciting and we want it. I think the Bills will keep it, but I don't agree with that decision. All right, next up is wide receiver. Obviously, Stefan Diggs, Gabriel Davis, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, the core four are locked in. Then it comes down to, really, for the roster, Isaiah McKenzie, Jay Kumaro, and Marcus Stevenson. A lot of people have been in their projections making Isaiah McKenzie a short-term IR candidate, bringing him onto the roster, but then putting him on IR and bringing someone back, etc., I don't envision that happening. Obviously, we don't have a prognosis yet on what's wrong with Isaiah McKenzie, but I think he'll be ready to go the first couple of weeks of the season. Marcus Stevenson, I think, has earned his way onto this football field. He has shown that he can return kicks and he can return punts effectively, and he also has shown that he can be a deep threat. He's not a young prospect that you want to risk the chance of losing because he could have a significant future on this football team. And that leads us to Jake Kumaro, a guy who's a little bit older, a guy who's on an expiring contract, a guy who might or might not have a significant future on this football team. Remember, Beasley and Sanders are a little older, so there are room for other guys in the future on this football team. But Jay Kumaro does have a role now as a four-phase special teamer, a big slot, a guy who could play multiple positions if there are injuries. I think the Buffalo Bills will try to cha- trade Jay Kumaro, but if they don't really get an offer that they really, really like, I assume that they will keep Jake Kumaro on the roster and keep seven wide receivers, mostly just because he's just too good to give up. I think at this point, uh, I think the Buffalo Bills are going to go shallow at tight end. We'll talk about that next. So I think there is room to justify keeping seven receivers on the roster. That leads us to the next guy on the list that's really interesting, and that's Isaiah McKenzie. I think I's, or not Isaiah McKenzie, Isaiah Hodgins. I think Isaiah Hodgins is waived outright. I don't think the Buffalo Bills place him on IR and lose him for the whole season. I don't foresee them carrying him to the active roster and then putting him on short-term IR. My my vision for Isaiah Hodgins is they want this guy to be out there at practice every day and trying to develop to find a role in this football team in the future. And if that means 
waiving him and risking losing him, that's fine. Because if you short-term IR him, he can't practice. If you IR him, he can't practice and he can't keep developing. Yeah, you'll get the body next year in training camp, but all of that practice time goes away. So to me, I think Isaiah Hodgins is waived outright. It's not like he's put on a lot of tape this preseason to get teams interested. A lot of wide receivers are going to be waived over the next couple of days. So I'm going to have Isaiah Hodgins as an outright cut that's brought back to the practice squad. Then either Steve Sims or Brandon Powell will be brought back as well for their kick and punt return ability, leaving Tanner Gentry really is the odd, odd man out here because he's the one who will probably end up being, despite his connections to Josh Allen, uh, the wide receiver that's out completely. Next up is tight end. Dawson Knox and Jacob Hollister are pretty much locked in as your first two tight ends. You might see Hollister as a guy who is waived. Uh, on the initial cutdown date, but brought back uh, because he is a vested veteran. So the Buffalo Bills can waive him, IR somebody, and then bring a guy like Jacob Hollister back. And then obviously, I think Reggie Gilliam has earned the spot as the third tight end slash fullback slash full fa- four phase special teamer. I think Gilliam has earned that role in the team, especially with a guy like Tommy Sweeney, who is uh, currently dealing with a ankle injury. Uh, so the tough question you have for the Buffalo Bills now is a guy like Nate Becker, a guy like Quentin Morris, they can easily be put on the practice squad. In my opinion, Nate Becker has earned it more than Quentin Morris. The question now is Tommy Sweeney. Do you want to carry him onto your active roster, then put him on short-term IR so you can bring him back? Do you want to put him on IR and completely end his season? Or do you want to waive the guy and just try to bring him back on your practice squad um, and he can recuperate and get better on your practice squad? I think the Buffalo Bills will probably carry him onto the active roster and they will short-term IR him. However, I wouldn't mind if they just straight up waived him and then brought him back. I think a guy like Tommy Sweeney, with all the injuries he has had, I, I can't foresee there being a very big market of people wanting to claim a guy like Tommy Sweeney off waivers. I think you can just put him onto your practice squad safely. I don't, I don't think that there's a spot for Tommy Sweeney right now on the Buffalo Bills active 53-man roster, even if he was healthy. Because Gilliam has proven to be that versatile guy. You have Knox and you have Hollister. You really don't want to waste another roster spot on a glorified blocker when a guy like Spencer Brown or Ryan Bates can be doing that stuff down by the goal line. I'd rather save that roster spot for somebody else. So if Tommy Sweeney's on the practice squad, then he can simply come up if needed. If one of these top three guys gets hurt, he can come up and then hopefully be on this football team next year and competing for a roster spot next year. The Buffalo Bills' offensive line appears to be set. From left to right, the starters look like they are going to be Deion Dawkins, John Feliciano, Mitch Morse, Cody Ford, and Daryl Williams. That leaves the three key reserves as Spencer Brown as your swing tackle, Ike Butker as your swing guard, and Ryan Bates as your backup center, as well as a player who can play guard and tackle. Those are eight solid offensive linemen for the Buffalo Bills. The question then becomes, do you keep a ninth or do you even keep a tenth? It appears like Jack Anderson is going to be a practice squad guy. Brandon Bean said he started off training camp really slow, but he's picked it up. My guess is you're not going to see a guy like Jack Anderson make the active roster. He will divert to the practice squad if he clears waivers. I think Jack Anderson will clear waivers. Tommy Doyle, on the other hand, even though he has not looked good, This is a guy who was a big project when we drafted him out of Miami of Ohio, and he has all the physical intangibles to be a really good offensive lineman. We've already seen in the past the Buffalo Bills wave guys like Ike Butker only to lose them and regret it, even though they happened to get Ike Butker back. They traded Wyatt Teller, who then started to click when he was with Cleveland. They kept Connor McDermott for way longer than we thought they would keep a guy like Connor McDermott. So I think Tommy Doyle is going to get the Connor McDermott treatment here, and he's going to be an inactive player every single game this season, barring injuries. But he's going to be on the active 53-man roster. So I have Tommy Doyle making it as the ninth offensive lineman. I don't have room for 10. I think Jameel Douglas will be priority practice squad. He'll be one of those guys who are protected every week. I think Bobby Hart, unless the Buffalo Bills can upgrade at tackle, will probably make his way to the Buffalo Bills practice squad as well. And obviously, Jordan Devy is an option for the practice squad. Some veteran guys who have been there, done that in the league, even though they might not have been there and done that great in the league. Um, they have that experience. And I think the Buffalo Bills will want that experience on their practice squad. I would really like the Buffalo Bills to try to upgrade offensive tackle on the practice squad. See if there's a veteran, <clears throat> Roger Johnson, <clears throat> Roger Johnson, out there who you can sign to your practice squad and have 
as an emergency player who might be an upgrade from a Bobby Hart. The toughest decision for the Buffalo Bills obviously comes up along the defensive line. Brandon Bean already said he's been fielding phone calls from multiple teams who are interested in Buffalo Bills defensive linemen, and it seems like Daryl Johnson is the one that they are interested in the most. So let's have a conversation and let's break it down. I think the Buffalo Bills defensive line, finger quotes, starters from left to right this season are going to be Jerry Hughes, Ed Oliver, Starlo Delele, and Mario Addison. Now, Hughes and Addison are going to be asked, I think, this year to play a limited role but that limited role is going to be to pin their ears back in pass rushing situations and get to the quarterback. Things they've proven they can do in this league in the past. That leaves maybe some of the first and second down work to younger guys. Guys like AJ Epinesa and Gregory Rousseau. Those are the guys who are going to be getting a bulk of the edge snaps, in my opinion. Boogie Basham, a second round pick. You obviously don't want to lose him. Plus, he has shown that he can be effective on the interior. And that leaves you between a choice between F.A. Obata and Daryl Johnson. And I'm choosing Daryl Johnson. I'm choosing the four-phase special teamer, the guy that Heath Farewell loves, and a guy who I can picture being the fourth defensive end on this football team for years and years and years to come. With guys like Hughes and Addison being at such an advanced age and probably not being with this football team beyond this season, I want to keep Daryl Johnson. F.A. Obata is 28-29, not as young as Daryl Johnson. F.A. Obata is on an expiring contract. Daryl Johnson is not. So despite how well F.A. Obata has played this preseason and, and how good he's looked in practice, he's the one I'm trying to trade here. He's the one I'm trying to get a day three pick for. As for defensive tackle, it appears like Oliver Lodolele will be your one too. And then the Buffalo Bills have some decisions to make. They could keep Obata and cut Vernon Butler. But you saw in that game against the Packers, they were struggling a little bit against the run. So I think they're going to want to keep at least four beefy guys. So it'll be Oliver Lodolele, Zimmer and Butler. Now, that being said, I think they cut a guy like Jacob Hollister or Taiwan Jones to keep Harrison Phillips on the roster, IR him, and then bring the other guy back. And I think Harrison Phillips starts the year on short term IR. When Harrison Phillips is ready to come back from the injury in, you know, three to six weeks, then the Buffalo Bills have a decision to make. Zimmer, Butler, Phillips, pick two. And that's the decision the Buffalo Bills will want to make. I think, obviously, Mike Love will be on the Buffalo Bills practice squad. Uh, Trayvon Hester, that injury will probably end up on IR. And a guy like Bryant will probably end up on the practice squad as well. But this is another position, especially in the interior defensive tackle, where the Buffalo Bills might start looking for an outside free agent to come bring in and develop on the practice squad. Things get interesting in the back half of the Buffalo Bills linebacking room. Obviously, Edmonds, Milano, and Klein are locks because of their ability to play in the in the 43 defense. There are our three linebackers. Tyler Matikavich is going to be our special teams ace. He will be in the back half of the linebacker depth chart. And then Andre Smith, who we talked about in the beginning. We're like, well, do we really want two special teams only linebackers? But the Bills seem dialed in on him as a special teamer and have played him a ton in the preseason on defense, and he's looked fairly good. So that leaves the Buffalo Bills with a decision. Do you keep six linebackers, which not a lot of teams who run a lot of nickel like they do are going to want to keep a spot for six linebackers? Or do you go with five? If they go with five, it's going to be Smith, Matikiewicz, Klein, Milano, and Edmonds. But if they go with six, that leaves a spot open for either Tyrell Dodson or Joe Giles Harris. I think we can count Joe Giles Harris out. He's a guy I think the Buffalo Bills would really like with his veteran leadership to get onto the practice squad. The question is, does Tyrell Dodson join him on the practice squad or not? Tyrell Dodson, despite the fact that he was a former UDFA, he has flashed in his time on the football field, and the Buffalo Bills have invested a lot in him. I think the Buffalo Bills see a future for him in Buffalo. So the question now is, do you want to risk Tyrell Dodson being claimed on waivers to try to get him onto your practice squad, or do you keep an open roster spot for him, even though he might be inactive on game day? I think the Buffalo Bills try to keep a roster spot open for Tyrell Dodson. I think that he has really um, won over this coaching staff. I think that Tremaine Emmons' contract is still maybe in limbo, right? Like, Tremaine Emmons signed that fifth-year extension, but then can we afford to keep him beyond that? Or do we want to pay him beyond that? So a guy like Tyrell Dodson could be an insurance policy. A guy like Tyrell Dodson could eventually usurp A.J. Klein next season because we probably, even though he's still got two years left on the contract, you might not want to have Klein next year. You might see an out for A.J. Klein and a spot for Tyrell Dodson. So I think that the Buffalo Bills keep the six linebackers because I truly think that they think Tyrell Dodson has a future on this defense and are willing to make him inactive every game barring injury, 
just to ensure that he stays on this roster. There's going to be some roster maneuvering, in my opinion, in the secondary as we approach the regular season. I think that Trey White, Levi Wallace, and Teron Johnson have obviously earned their place as the starters when we play nickel defense. Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer are going to be your top two safeties. Then the question becomes the depth in the secondary. And in this situation, I have Nick McLeod, Elijah Griffin, and Tim Harris all getting waived. I think that McLeod and Griffin are both guys who have a decent chance of bring, being brought back on the Buffalo Bills practice squad. I think McLeod definitely has the upper hand there. As for the depth in the secondary, I also have Cam Lewis and Josh Thomas being waived. However, I think the Buffalo Bills will waive them with the expectation that they will clear waivers and they will be re-signed to the roster. I think Dane Jackson and Jaquan Johnson will both start the season on short-term IR, meaning the depth at corner will be Saran Neal and Cam Lewis, and the depth at safety will be Damar Hamlin and Josh Thomas. Then, in three to six weeks, or however long it takes them to come back, the Buffalo Bills will then have a decision to make. More than likely, I think they will probably cut Cam Lewis, they will activate Dane Jackson, and Cam Lewis will become a member of the practice squad. I also think that likely... Jaquan Johnson will become a member of the active roster. Josh Thomas will get cut and Josh Thomas will be moved to the practice squad. So that's my prediction in the secondary. This is definitely another position where maybe the Buffalo Bills want to consider seeing and testing the market for a veteran corner and replacing Cam Lewis completely uh, with a veteran player and then waving Dane Jackson and trying to get Dane Jackson out of the practice squad. It's definitely something the Buffalo Bills might want to consider because it's definitely a concern shared throughout Bill's Mafia, the depth in the secondary. So there you have it, folks. My final 53-man roster projection at quarterback, Josh Allen, Mitch Trubisky, running back, Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, Matt Breda, Taiwan Jones, wide receiver, keeping seven, Stefan Diggs, Gabriel Davis, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, Isaiah McKenzie, Jake Kumaro, and Marquez Stevenson at tight end, Dawson Knox, Jacob Hollister, Reggie Gilliam, along the offensive line, Dawkins, Feliciano, Ford, Morse and Williams uh, with Brown, Butker, Bates, and Doyle backing up. Along the edge on defense, Hughes, Addison, Epinesa, Rousseau, Johnson, and Basham. Along the interior of the defensive line, Ed Oliver, Star, Lotulale, Justin Zimmer, and Vernon Butler. At linebacker, Edmonds, Milano, Klein, Dodson, Smith, Matikiewicz. At corner, White, Wallace, Johnson, Lewis, Neal. At safety, Hyde, Poyer, Hamlin, and Thomas. On special teams, Bass, Hawk, and Ferguson on injured reserve to start the year, Harrison Phillips, and then a decision will need to be made between him, Butler, and Zimmer, Dane Jackson, then a decision will need to be made when he's ready to return between him and Cam Lewis, and Jaquan Johnson, a decision will need to be made when he needs to return between him and Josh Thomas. And then obviously I had the trade of F.A. Obata for a day three pick, and hopefully maybe Jake Fromm for a day three pick as well. Thank you so much for joining us on this different kind of uh, podcast today. We are so sorry that we couldn't be with you guys and hear what you guys want to think for your 53 man, but feel free to hit us up at the Bills guys or at Judge Mathis or at Tilt Money. Hit us up with your 53 man roster projections. I know Chris Jenkins already hit us up. A couple of people have already hit us up. Tag us in your 53 man roster projections. We'd be happy to talk about it with you guys that way. And we will be back with you live Thursday night. 9 p.m. to break down the 53-man roster and getting look, getting ready for real football. That's right, real football. Buffalo Bills, Pittsburgh Steelers, at home, season opener, one, two weeks away. Dang, it's so sad to say it aloud. Two weeks away. Stupid bye week. Anyway, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, go Bills.